understand that there seems to be a rift among the hierarchy, you, the governorship, the deputy governorship candidate, and there are insinuations that the governor is also involved. Some have said he was sort of openly disrespected the governor, so you might want to set the ball rolling on that. To always be lying in a shaitani regime. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al-Kareem. Uh, my distinguished, respected colleagues, members of the press, my brothers, the fourth estate of the rim, I welcome you to this very brief but very important press briefing. I intend to convene this briefing in order to discharge my moral responsibility, in order to also discharge my moral duty as a card-carrying member of the APC. We are faithful in the party we call APC. We believe in its principles, we believe in, in, in its programs, and we also believe in its programs and plans of actions as a party that could provide the appropriate vehicle to deliver Nigeria to the next level. We have already set a very good foundation. Good foundation in the sense that we have had four four to seven years of solid re reconstruction of what you call the Nigerian space, Nigerian political space. This is courtesy of President Muhammad Buhari. When we took over, at the time when Muhammad Buhari came in for his first term, we took over what you can call Nigeria in a mess, mess all over, foreign diplomacy, economy, human relationship, internal security, our own security system at that time was almost on its knees. But I want to say with all sense of pride, with all sense of responsibility, that when Muhammad Buhari took over to date, we have recorded so many improvements and successes in the area of economy, infrastructural development, and in the area of security itself. I do not mean to say that the security problems are over. They cannot be yet over because it was a very serious and momentous destruction in that area. But I can say without fear of contradiction that at least President Muhammad Buhari has now created a very new political space. He has now been able to entrench a very new and veritable economic space for, for a better Nigeria. He has laid successfully what you can call a very solid foundation for a takeoff of another APC government, which by our hope it will be taken over by the distinguished senator a statesman, an elder statesman, a philanthropist, a man that possesses what it takes to take the charge and responsibility of a country like Nigeria, Senator Bola Ahmed Tunibu. It is my hope, and it, it is also the hope of the APC people in Nigeria that Bola can be able to discharge his duties, that Bola can be able to continue to consolidate and build on the gains earlier laid down by President Muhammad Buhari. That is why we call ourselves members of the same family. And it is on this background, on this note, Terry, I feel time has come when I should, honestly, time has come when I should sincerely come out to discharge my duty as a peaceful member of my party. And I want to say today, without any fear of contradiction, without any fear of intimidation, without any fear of any quota or any authority anywhere, that there is fire on the mountain as far as the APC is concerned in Kano State. Pyre on the mountain. I repeat, pyre on the mountain. This is the right time to say it because we have been going through silent crisis. We have been going through party administration, especially in the area of party politicking, with a lot of intrigues, with a lot of exclusion of members. Management and administration of the party is being done exclusively by few members of the party who are by all standing are not even supposed to handle what they are handling for the party APC. I want to say for the purposes of clarification that I'm talking about party politics in Kano in our party APC. When you come to talk about governance, governance where Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje is taking charge, I have nothing against that. And I want to say that of all the 36 governors of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the FCT, 
I can bet anyone, and I have my reason to say, Governor Dr. Ablai Umar Ganduje is my number one governor. It doesn't matter what any other person may say. Ganduje has promoted Kano State in the area of infrastructure, reconstruction of social amenities for the benefit of our people. Ganduje has improved the standard of our people in the area of education, especially basic education. Ganduje has also created a new political space where we do politics without wranglings, where politics is being exercised without envy or without enmity among us. Ganduje is a patient governor. Ganduje is a strategist. Ganduje is a master planner. In fact, I will remain proud to remain a student of Ganduje School of Thought. Ganduji has done virtually nothing you cannot expect. If you go to some of our some of our places in the metropolitan city of Kano today, I bet you if you move at night, you will mistake yourself being in Dubai or one of these developed countries in the world. Ganduji has paid his dues. Ganduji has done the much we expected of him as the governor of Kano State. But that was not without any wonder. No wonder at all. Because this is man, this is one man who started right from a councillorship councillorship and a councillorship under an appointment to serve people at the grassroots level, not in his own local community in Guagualada here. Appointed councillor in someone's home. That was where Ganduja started. Ganduja rose to become a local government chairman under military administration of Buari, Guagualada, and Kuali local government areas of the FCT. So when you have someone who has this as his own background, and an intellectual in the area of education, a PhD holder, Dr. Ablai Umar Ganduje, has also risen to the level of civil service, held so many positions in terms of civil service administration. He also became, became commissioner severally. He became chief of staff to military government, and at, the, at last he became deputy governor twice in the Nigeria's most populous state, Kano. I repeat, in the Nigeria's most controversial state, Kano. Ganduje proved his mental and did very well as a deputy governor two times. Ganduje also became governor, executive governor elected for his first term. We came for the second term. Ganduje, based on his performance, based on his delivery, based on the conviction and commitment of the Kano people, we also stood by him and made sure he became governor the second term. Don't mind whatever insinuations. I believe others may call him so many things, call him names and what have you. Those names are not anything as far as we are concerned in Kano, but they are medals on his chest because we have seen what he has been able to deliver in our state. Kano today is one state that we can beat our chest to say that at least within the committee of states in Nigeria, Kano will take a single number. Perhaps you may remember Lagos. I agree, Lagos might be a bit ahead of Kano. Population, development, infrastructure, but I want to bet you, Terry, even your state of Benue cannot match Kano today. <laughs> if you are from Cross River, I bet you, Cross River cannot match Kano state. All the results of the handwork of Governor Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje. Ganduje today has done all that is expected to make Kano a very convenient environment for every business. One other, one other area most people don't understand. Today, in the northern part of the country, because of the commitment, determination, and because of his belief in the discharge of his duty as the executive governor of Kano State and the chief security officer of the state, and more so as a Muslim, he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that every leader you have seen is a shepherd. And God, in the day of judgment, he will ask him what he has done with the, with the catalyst that he was given to look after. So knowing fully well that Governor Ganduje is a shepherd, this time around, shepherd of human beings. This time around, shepherd of women and the young men. This time around, shepherd of the property and lives of the people of Kano State. I want to beat my chest to say, Kano State today, at least in the northern, in the northern part of Nigeria, is the most peaceful state. It is safe in, the in terms of security. I come from the remotest area of Kano State. From Kano municipality to where I come from is about 205 kilometers. We had all kinds of challenges in that area, very remote. Telephone still, telephone does not work effectively in my constituency 
because of the remoteness, because of the relief, relief area, the poorest in Palgoda Game Reserve at one time became like a small Sambiza. It was like just a pyre prawn. Today, I want to say, courtesy of Governor Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje, he has been able to transform every inch of Kano State as a, as a safe home. Safe home in the sense that nothing happens. No kidnapping. No banditry. No armed robbery. That is why most of the northern states, especially those neighboring Kano, Jigawa, Kastina, and even Kaduna State, have now found Kano as their second home. I must thank Kanduje. I must salute Kanduje for this good job he is doing. And we will continue to be proud to be associated with him as our leader. We will be proud to be associated with him as our governor. I love how I wish you could have a governor in Nigeria that would serve 10 times as a governor. We would have continued to vote for Ganduje to serve as 10 times governor in my state because of his performance. Hold it. I'm giving you this background because I want you to understand the difference of the leadership in governance and the leadership of the party politics in Kano. And that is where I'm coming from. The leadership of our party in Kano, unfortunately, for quite some time, has been subjected into serious hula balu, into serial crisis, misunderstanding, chasing, witch hunting of party members. And this inaction or this activity is being perpetrated by some members whom I believe Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje does not realize. He has handed over the affairs of the party to some individuals who are now simply watching out their own bid. Through their misdeed, today we have lost so many significant personalities, BIP, in the party because the party is not being managed with what you call democratic inclusiveness. I want to say without any fear of contradiction, I want to say without any fear of being quoted, that is a former commissioner for local government affairs, who is now the running mate to our gubernatorial candidate in person of Honorable Muritala Silangaro. Muritala Silangaro has now turned to be like a cancer worm. Muritala Silangaro has now turned to be like a traitor. Muritala Silangaro has now turned to be the destroyer of the success of our party, APC in Kano, but the governor never realizes. I therefore want to be the first person in Nigeria and the first peaceful APC in Kano state. And in my position and my capacity as the leader of the House of Representatives, which of course, I am also the leader of my party in the jurisdiction of the House of Representatives, to say that APC is in trouble, to say that APC is in crisis, because this gentleman, has proved to be the one to destroy APC by chasing so many good people in the party. He has caused this party the exit and the camping of more than five members of the House of Reps. They left simply because he hated them. They, didn't, they were denied tickets, even with the agenda of Femi Bajabi Amila, the Speaker of the House, to always go and embrace the issue of continuity in parliamentary business. The, the agenda of the Ninth House of Representatives under Femi Bajabi Amila has always been about diplomacy, diplomacy, co co uh, continuation, and also joint, 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 joint task, working together with every component of the party to be able to keep one government under one system. He has taken this party to the goatas now. We lost nine members of the House of Representatives to another party. We have lost key members. Take, for instance, Honorable Kabiru al Hassan Lurum was a former speaker of Kano State three times. Three times speaker of Kano State. Very high level key stakeholder in Kano. Today, as I speak to you, because of the inactions and the, the, the arrogance of Muritala Selangaro, this man is normal in the APC. He has slept for the NNPP. I want to also tell you that there are other members who wanted to run for governorship. They were all chased away, embarrassed, simply because Muritala Silagaro was nursing gubernatorial ambition. As God may have it, the good God, the very good God, the God that loves all, the God that knows today and God that knows tomorrow. God knew that with Muritala as governor, then Kano would have been in trouble. Governor uh, Muritala's ambition was therefore marred by the wisdom and the spirit of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He could not get it. And this was possible because our governor also saw it, it, saw the handwriting on the wall. 
It is because our governor is a listening governor. He looks at the opinion of the people. He consults. He liaises with people. At the end, he came to understand that this, this gentleman, Murtala Silangaro, cannot be the right person to take over him. One, his age is even, is even at the low side. His age is at the low side. His experience is also at the low side. I am not saying he's not qualified to be a governor or to run for governorship. But by age, in a state like Kano, we need somebody who is of more mature, matured status than Murtala Silangaro. Governor Ganduje took a very wise and good decision and br brought someone who is also a man of timber and caliber. He brought someone who is also a qualified person and an experienced person in the space of politics. Somebody who we all believe that he can do as good as Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduja is doing today. In fact, I have the conviction and the commitment that Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna, our gubernatorial candidate in the state today, Wallahi can perform even better than Ganduji. Reason, he is now his deputy. They are working together. He has stopped a lot of experiences and he has stopped a lot of knowledge from his principal. Learned so many things. I believe as a young man, if Gauna becomes the governor of Kano State by 2023, he will put up to his own God-given experience. It will be now a government that will be managed by the golden and the noble experience of an old gentleman and, administra and an administrator, Ganduje, and with a, with a noble and vibrant, proactive opinion and ideas of a young man and a very strong Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna. So I have the hope that if we succeed in 2023 with Gauna being in charge, you will have a government that will be a government of continuity. But with what is happening today, Terry, I want to say that all authorities involved in the party, whether at the national level or at the, at the lower level, I want to draw their attention and urge them to quickly wave into the affairs of the party management of the APC in Kano State because this boy, Murtala Silangaro, is causing serious damage and destruction in the party. I am a loyal member of the party and I want to confirm to you that I remain an APC member till the end of the life of the party or till the end of my life. I can never get out of APC. Whether my wishes are actualized or not, I am a natural member of the APC, and so I will remain. But responsibility, moral conviction, demands that I should come out as the first Kano indigent to take the bullet by my chest, that if care is not taken, and this gentleman is allowed to continue to mishandle the affairs of this party in the name of former commissioner local government or in the name of someone who feels he is stronger than even the governor, then we forget it. I repeat, if Murtala continues to be at the forefront of the lead and the management of our party, come 2023 during our election, I repeat, Terry, we forget it. We forget it because we have so many challenges. We have a lot of challenges. Whether you like it or not, my brother, my brother, I repeat, my brother, my leader then, my leader then, of course he is not my leader now. My friend then, my friend then, I repeat, my friend in those days, of course he is not my friend now. He's someone that you cannot take for granted. Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso is a man of timber and caliber, as far as Kano politics is concerned. He is someone who is grassrooted. He has his network of people. Don't mind whatever we say. Don't mind what anybody from Kano tells you. Ganduj, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso is still a strong man on ground with his strong people on ground, with a very effective and reliable political party networking. I'm telling you that the APC in Kano is facing this threat. And, if, and with this, you are now trying to create trouble within the party. You, this, you can, this cannot succeed. We cannot succeed with this. I want to refer this press briefing to a specific moment, which of course made me to, 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 to break my silence. On Monday, I can't remember the date, perhaps first of, Monday should be first or second of November. I happened to have a reason or a cause to go to the residence of Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna, who today is the deputy governor of Kano State. And he is also our plug bearer for the gubernatorial election in Kano State for the APC. 
a very brilliant candidate, a very brilliant gentleman, somebody that we believe has the sagacity and he has also the capacity to deliver if elected as governor of Kano State. I happened to be in his house, not knowing a meeting was going on. I want to say without any fear of being quoted, yes, I was not invited. Yes, I did not go there to attend their meeting. I only went there to meet with my party chairman, whom I had an issue to discuss with him, and he told me to come and discuss it uh, briefly and leave. So when I, when I now went to the place, I met them in a formal meeting, not just a formal meeting, in an institutional party meeting, and they called that meeting stakeholders meeting. In a stakeholders meeting in Kano, I want to believe as long as you have the deputy governor is there, standing in for the governor who is the leader of the party. You have the speakership, the speaker of the Kano State Assembly seated there. Of course, he is representing an institution at the state level. You also have representatives of the commissioners, executive arm of government. I saw the representation of the party because the party chairman was there, his deputy was there, the secretary of the party was also there. What was left as a vacuum to me and to my mind and my understanding was that the National Assembly was left out. So I ordinarily made an observation to the deputy governor who was presiding over. Your Excellency, if actually this was a stakeholder meeting, if actually what you are doing here is to see and run the affairs of our party in the state, I have seen a vacuum where an institution is neglected. I have seen a vacuum where an, a democratic institution recognized by the Constitution is not being taken along in this meeting. I have not seen any senator here. We have two senators of our party in Nigeria, in Kano State. I have not seen any member. I was not even speaking for myself, Terry. I was speaking for the institution of the legislature where I belong, rightly. I was not talking about the leadership, my leadership position as majority leader of the House of Representatives. I only said, Gauna, our next governor, this meeting is not complete. And if we have any problem, you let us know why did you decide not to invite representation of the members of the National Assembly? Not a single man is there. After all, you have the leader of the House of Representatives in the House of Reps. He is rating number three. If you put the National Assembly together, Senate and the, National, the, the House of Representatives, I am rating number, number, number six. If you bring Nigerian protocol to bear, right from Mr. President to the bottom, I, do, I, don't, I will not take a double number. Leader of the House of Representatives, by the protocol of Nigeria and by the providence of our democratic rules book, if you want to count by protocol in Nigeria as, an, as a government, I will not take a double number. Then I asked, why would you have meetings of stakeholders and no one of us is involved here? Terry, I want to be very open with you. I want to be very open with you. Before I closed my mouth, this arrogant member, this member who felt he's over and above everyone, including the governor, got up on his feet to say, Ado, you are stupid. Ado, you are stupid. Somebody that is not half of my age to call me a stupid. And he pronounced my father's, my late father's name, my late father's name. He pronounced that name and abused my father, who is late. Terry, I'm a human being. Terry, I'm a legitimate son of my dad. I don't think even President Buhari can be better than my father. My father is everything for me. But this guy abused my father. Abused my father in a meeting. And every one of them was seated and they looked on. At the end, I could not help it. I got up. He got up. I also abused him. I'm sorry about that. My position, of course, may not have been to that extent. I also retaliated. Only for me, subsequently, the following day, I saw what you call like syndicate. The syndicated news created and fabricated fake news all over to say, that I went to a meeting that I was not invited and I abused everybody in the meeting and I also took a cup of tea to break the head of the deputy gubernatorial candidate, the former commissioner for local governments. The laws are there. I cannot be over and above the law. The rule of law is there. 
and as a, as a lawmaker, I have every respect of our laws, the laws of the land. I challenge anyone, and I challenge every one of them that was in the meeting to bring facts, facts that confirm that, yes, I used a cop to injure Murtala Silangaru. What actually transpired there was that because they were enjoying themselves, of course, they are called stakeholders, maybe even sharing money, because Tinubu came, and when he left, maybe there was some uh, remnants of what to share. They were enjoying themselves. So every one of them had a cup of tea before him. At last, I was made to understand that because it was a Monday, they fasted on Monday. But I believe Murtala Silangaru did not fast on Monday. He doesn't fast only in Ramadan. He only passed only in Ramadan. He does not fast on special fasting. But he was there simply because he has been dreaded. Everybody is afraid of him. I cannot be afraid of a traitor. So I replied him, take care, take care and don't embarrass me anymore. Before you know it, he was shaking, shaking, shaking the table. The cup of tea on top of the table fell down with the water. And he had no shoe on his legs. He had an, what do you call, open shoes, op slippers, open shoe. And already when he was vibrating, he left his shoe off. And when the water fell down with the cup, the guy got slippery and fell down and subsequently got injured on the face. That was how he got his injury. But it is all over now on the street that it's me that took a cup and broke a broken cup and injured him. I want to say and repeat, just like I have said in an advertorial in the, in the Daily Trust of yesterday on page 14, that I still stand by what I said there. I did not break his head. I did not injure him and I cannot injure him. After all, as a traditional ruler of great repute, somebody that is today a kingmaker, somebody that today that is an emirate council member, somebody that is today the Sardona of Reno Emirate, an emirate that has or existed for more than 250 years in Kano. You can't assume and imagine somebody of my own standing, even if I'm not a leader of the House of Representatives, to act in that manner. Murtala, after all, is not only my, my brother, he is my junior, junior, junior brother. Why? Because in 1992, when I first came to the House of Representatives, his elder brother, Senator Aminu Silangaro, was my colleague in the House of Representatives. My colleague in the House of Representatives. So, by extension, I look at Murtala as my junior brother. Why should I even engage myself into any hiccups with him? For what? What has he got to add to me when I fight Murtala? I have not fought him. I have not injured him. And I never insulted him. But I only paid him in the same coin, like he abused me, I abused him. And I even want to use this opportunity to apologize to the very humble and respected family of Garo family, minus Murtala, minus Murtala. But the Garo family is a big family. Garo family is a respected family. Garo family is a humble family. And I have benefited from the benevolence and generosity of that great family. I apologize to that family. But for Murtala, I have no apologies whatsoever because he abused me, and my people are not happy. As I speak to you today, right from yesterday, APC members, thousands and thousands of APC members in my constituency, right from yesterday, are now plying the APC flag at half mask, half mask, because they are angry, because they are not happy that somebody, uh, somebody somewhere abused my late father, and my late father was an elder statesman as far as my federal constituency is concerned. He served as a legislator in the state assembly. Every bit of conservative or progressive development you have seen in Dogwa or in Tidungwada were the handwork of my good father when he was working in the Kano State Legislature. I understand my people will ply the APC plug full mask by tomorrow. After, after morning, morning, a session of sadness that a small boy at 38 abused our own daddy, the father of the community. It is on this note that I feel I should bring all these things to bear and Nigerians to know that this is what it is now in Kano. And before this, on the day, very day, Tinubu visited Kano. This same Murtala, while going around the street, he noticed, he noticed that I had billboards, and on my billboards, I have not placed his picture. 
My billboard, I'm a national figure. I'm a leader by all standard. A member of the neck of the party. A member of the national caucus of the party where the president presides. I am also a member of the tripartite committee, presidential tripartite committee. These are committees that are only special to people who are special. These committees are the highest decision-making bodies of our party, APC. These are committees for people who matter. Even in Kano State, it is only my respected governor and myself, not even the party chairman, can be a member of these three key committees of our party. Mr. President himself has able regard for me because I have consistently served my party and its principles. I have protected the position of government on the floor of the House against the opposition of the opposition PDP and any other opposition party. And it is courtesy of that that Mr. President this time around said, I don't give money to politicians. I don't give regard to politicians. I don't give politician caps. He now remembered we have a gentleman on the floor of the House who has been in the House for 30 years and he has been doing very brilliantly well in the name of Alassane Ado Dogwa. It was Alassane Ado Dogwa that led the parliamentary front from Nigeria to the war front in the power Poland and Ukraine. When fire was going on, I led a parliamentary team under the orders of my leader and my principal, Pemi Bajabi Amila, the Speaker of the House of Reps. I think I've also paid my dues in the area of public and patriotic service to my country, Nigeria. Buhari put all this together and said, I have today conferred on Right Honorable Alassane Adodogwa a national order of the OON, which of course is a great thing to me that since the emergence or since the creation on earth, my community, the constituency I come from, we have never had any individual that had got that kind of honor, including my dad, with due respect, who has passed away in the last four years. But thank God, even when my dad is now late, I'm sure he'll be smiling in the grave that I've earned this honor for my family. I have earned this honor for him. So I will be surprised if somebody, just a rat on the floor, who has not gone to school well, we are even now in the, in the insinuation of a likely problem that this Murtala Langaru, of course, is arguable. I don't know whether that is true or not, but there is high level of confusion, high level of suspicion, high level of speculation, speculations going all over the street that Murtala is a dropout. And here we are having a dropout to run with our competent governor, well-educated governor, well-trained and brilliant administrator. And you all can tell me what it will involve if you have a competent governor to run and you have an ill-pated running mate to run on the same ticket. We have the Bielsa example, where somebody won election lit without let or hindrance, but unfortunately, his running mate was found wanting. At the end, the APC of today lost out the golden state of Bielsa. I want to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let our leaders see the right thing, to let our leaders come bold to know that you, we should not be afraid of a person or individual. Call a spade a spade. We should set up an investigative panel to investigate this boy, Murtala Surangaru, to be safe, to confirm whether he has gone to school and where are his certificates, to go to the schools and confirm which room has he lived when he was a student, to go to the principals or vice, vice, vice chancellors of the universities he claimed to have attended, to go through their registered records to confirm that Murtala Silangaro is safe and he can run for governorship, deputy governorship election with our brilliant governor, Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna. If these key areas, these key observations, key manifestations, key compensations that I've made, right, starting from exclusion, exclusion of relevant party officials in the management of the affairs of the party. Coming through embarrassment and sheer arrogance by someone in the name of being Alpha and Omega in the system, many members left the party, lost nine members. If we don't look at this implication where this man can rise to look at the face of the number, nine, number eight citizen of this country, which is my humble self, with due respect, would, and abused me, call my father's name in his own Quran name, abused him, then I think, I think, I think, I think we are helpless. So 
this is why I said you should come. And I want to urge you to do justice to what I have said. I mean what I said, no matter the emotions, no matter the agitation. I know what I've said is the truth and nothing but the truth. And I urge on our leadership and the ranks of the APC, especially Senator Abdullah Adamu, who is the overall leader of the APC, and President Muhammad Buhari, who is also 50% a Kano indigen, 50% a Kassini indigen. I said so because Kano and Daura are one. I believe President Buhari lives so much in Kano and he knows what it is in Kano. He knows all these families. He knows all that we are doing. Buhari, you have nothing to take away from him as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are approaching election. Unfortunately, we are now approaching an election where everyone will only answer his father's name. I want to tell you without shame, without fear, without being ashamed of it, that I know in the past five elections that I won, there was a time when I won election with only 18 vote difference. I only won election remarkably, rem remarkably with a sweeping vote when Buhari came on the ballot. For the first time, I won and defeated my opponent with over 9,000 votes simply because Nigerians and the people of my constituency believed in Buhari. The second time, even with the insinuations, even with the Boko Harams, even with the opposition saying all, all sorts of names, Buhari still remained the only factor that we rode on his back to succeed in our election in the northern part of the country. I don't know what happens in Yola. I saw it in, 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 in Inugu. I don't know what might have happened maybe in Imo and other states of the Federation with due respect. But I want to say, all of us that came under the APC in the two elections that we have won, we have all gotten our successes courtesy of Muhammad Buhari because he is one person that every northern and typical commoner in the north believes in him. People are saying different things now. Oh, Buhari is this, Buhari is that. Buhari is still the factor to beat. And even when we are going to have a ballot now without Buhari on the ballot, I'm telling you, we will still ride on his good name. We will ride on the good work he has, do, he has done or he is doing to win our elections. I'm telling you, if anyone could dare now call Buhari someone else, or you disassociate yourself with Buhari coming come 2023 during the elections, then you forget your victory. Buhari still remains the only father in the north. He remains the only leader in the north. He remains the only direction and our focal point of hold as far as polit party politics is concerned. So I want to say, without any fear of contradiction, that President Muhari, Muhammad Buhari still has a stake. Abdullah Adamu has a stake. And all other leaders of the party must have a stake to come and address this problem in Kano. APC must be united. APC must be all-inclusive. APC must be a party of respect, of rule of law. And if that is not done by the challenge we are facing, the threat we are facing of a lion, I repeat, we are facing a challenge of a man you can call a lion. Forget about all other names I called Konkoso. Konkoso still is a lion in Kano politics. And I want to say for the first time in, li in my life, for the record, no matter what I say about Konkoso, no matter what I say about Konkoso in the past and in the future, it's not because he is lacking in political sagacity or in his capacity. Konkoso has offended me personally. And my business with him now is a personal one, not political. I cannot take away the credit from Konkoso that yes, he's a leader of, of repute. What he has done to me personally is that I have related with him very well. My mother, my mother, my blood mother, Haji Zainab, is from his village. He knows her. I know his mother. We relate closely. But simply because I am now a disciple and a student of Ganduje, when my dad died, up to today, Konkoso did not find it worth worthy to come to my community, to a family of over 200 people, whom he knows one by one, to say, I am sorry, I came to condole with you that we have lost our father. Four years now. This is my problem with Tongso. It has nothing to do with politics. I can abuse him to hell. 
it is all about I am not happy. Konkoso did not respect the integrity of my family and the respect he should have for my father. But with this or without this, I cannot take away the sterling qualities in him as a leader. Tell Konkoso, go and tell Konkoso that if he could today, today if he can pick his phone, call me to tell me that Ado Dogwa, the leader of the House of Reps, my name is Rabbi Musa Konkoso. I have a second thought. I think it's uncharitable that your dad is now passed away and I have not, I have not controlled you. I want to say, forgive me, and I want to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant al Hajj Ado al Jannah Pirdausi, and you please forgive me. I will forgive Konkoso once and for all, and I will never fight him anymore. He can do his politics, I will do my politics without let or without hindrance. But if Konkoso decides to continue this way, to, be keep, to, be, to keep quiet in the face of the days of my father, he, could, he knows my father. There was a time he lived and stayed in my father's house, not to sleep anyway, but because of for me, because of me, he has, used, he, has, he has been coming to my house, lived in the parlor, just like his own parlor. And my father is an elder statesman because even in those days, as a PRP man, he was a member of the state assembly during Abu Bakr Rimi. And Konkoso still feels he cannot come to say, sorry, your dad is passed away, your dad is late. May Allah give him a Jannah. This is an offense. This is an, this, is an, this is an assault that I can never forget. I can only forget, I can only forget if Konkoso could have a second thing a second thought to come and say, I'm sorry, may Allah grant your father a gender if he does. And one, one very humble thing, Terry, that you may need to know, even when in the four years that my father is late or has passed away, he didn't come to greet me, he didn't come to greet my family, a family of over 200 people. Extended family of 200 people. Imagine a family where you have just myself having four wives with 28 kids. And we have over 40, pe 40 people as words of my late father. Multiply. Tell me the multiplier the multiply effects. We have our daughters that we have given in marriage. They have also uh, uh, produced in their respective matrimonial homes. I want to beat to my chest to say that today in my constituency, no one single family is as big as my family. So if Konkoso could not come to say sorry. And one funny thing that I want to tell you is not funny. It is humble. It is humility. It is humility. It is morality. It is patience. That four years after my dad first passed away, he also lost his father. To God who created me, I went myself alone. Alone. I went to his family. I went to meet his mothers and sisters and brothers to say, I am sorry, I learned uh, the, our father. Our father. Alaji Musa Konkoso. Majidat Nkano has passed away. So I came to pray for him. May Allah give him al Jannah Pirdaus. That is what we are taught in, in, in Islam. If somebody slaps you here, give him the other side to slap. If you slap the second place, then get a loaf of bread or get a debt or sweet or chocolate and dash him. That is the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am proud today to say that I have discharged the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when somebody did not condole me on the loss of my father, but I went to his family and condoled him on the loss of his father. This is, this is quite a very good question. Murtala today is nothing by standing, is nothing by position of office. He is nothing even by office because he is just a running mate to the gubernatorial candidate of our party who is a very, very, very active and proactive gentleman, brilliant Nasur Yusuf Gauna. But how he got that power I can tell you, before he now became a running mate, he resigned his office as Commissioner for Local Government Affairs. Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs. I'm sure you guys in the press, you know what we call those ministries in the state. We call them Ministry for Petroleum Resources. So this is one Murtala who has gotten an opportunity to serve in one ministry in Kano that had stupendous amount of money. By hook or by crook, he was able to make too much and feel he could be over and above everyone. And at the end, by working in that office, he was also superintending, as his jurisdiction, the local government chairman. 
the local government councillors who are also part of the system of the party. So it's like everybody down the ladder look up to Murtala as the only leader. Some other people don't even look at governor as the, as, as, the, as the leader of the party. He has gotten that power. Do you know I can tell you one story that you will be, you will, be, you will come to say, oh, uh, Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje is a saint. And this story I will say publicly, and I challenge you to quote me. Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje is one only patient Nigerian I have never seen. Very patient. If you slap him here, you give you the right face to slap. Ganduje is someone, when you meet him in his office, seated because of humility and morality, seated on a chair, if you decide by way of respect to sit on the floor, Wallahi al-Azimu Ganduje will get out of the chair and sit on the floor with you. That is what Ganduje is. How I wish, how I wish, I wish I could be like Ganduje, but I can't afford to be this type. When Ganduja decided on his own through consultations with the ulamas, through consultations with the traditional institutions, through consultations with political party holders, party officers, when he decided not to make Murtala the gubernatorial candidate, of course, that, that is what he was working for. He wanted to be the gubernatorial candidate. In fact, everyone in Kano felt Murtala was going to be our candidate for governorship. At the end, Allah in his wisdom, Allah being the knower of everything, all knowing Allah, knew that Murtala cannot make you a good governor. God held the hands of Ganduje and now wrote in capital letters that my deputy should take over me. And Murtala, who probably is seen to be like a, like a, like a traitor for whatever reason, then Governor Ganduje said, okay, run, be his running mate. At least age is on your side. Perhaps when you, became more, when you become more matured in the next eight years, you can also learn the rope and be a governor that can be of pride to Kano people. That guy from there, from that very meeting, he started crying and got out of the meeting, banged the door on the governor, went to his house. And this guy was making all sort of noise. All sort of noise that he will get out of the party. I will leave the party. I will leave the party. Do you know his reason? that he is married to the daughter of Atiku Abubakar. His new wife now, his last wife now, is the daughter of Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of PDP in Nigeria. He told me myself when I went to plead with him, don't be angry, don't be angry. He told me one on one to God who created me that since you have messed me up, since you said I cannot make a good governor, since the system have undermined what I did for the party, I rather become an illo to a president than to be a deputy governor who will make me just like a messenger. So this is the disposition of this boy. So what he's doing now today, this guy to God who created me has no faith in working for APC. He is now working towards becoming an illo to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which I believe will never happen. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today is President Muhammad Buhari. And I vet you, if you like, I vet you. The incoming president to take over from Buhari is Senator Bola Ahmed Tunubu, be in Allah, be in Allah. And those of us who are his disciples, those of us who stood by him, even when others were running away, those of us who made institutional pronouncement that Tunubu is the man to be, in those days when others were afraid, we will not allow conspiracy in Kano politics. We will not allow people who will undermine the integrity of our candidate. We will not allow people who will call themselves APC members in the daytime and at night they go and hold meetings with PDP, PDP members, fi finance them, give them money to do what they want to do. This is what I think Murtala is working for. So Nigerians should know this. Nigerians should know this. Leaders should know this and take it away. I forgot the other time I was telling you simply because of this thing that happened. Murtala Selangaru took to the street and tore all of my pictures. Anywhere you see my pictures is either cross in red, cross in red, or is torn out. And my offense is simply because I printed a poster and billboard that does not reflect his picture. Who is Garo for me to, to, to print his picture on my billboard? Who is Garo, by the way? What has he done? The only record he has in life is that he was appointed local government chairman. Appointed, not even elected. 
and he served as commissioner for local government affairs two times. I wonder how he thinks his picture could add any value to me. It is me that will add value to the ticket of Murtala Silangaru and the governorship candidate because I have a community to identify with. I have voters who are peaceful in me. So he said, since I have not respected him, since everybody is putting his picture on the billboard, but me, I am bold enough, I am big enough not to put his picture, then no one of my billboards or pictures should be allowed to drive on the street of Kano. He has torn them out. And in some places, he crossed them, he crossed them. Is this the kind of APC that the body met? Is this the kind of APC that Bola Ibe Tunibu want for us to succeed and deliver a president that will take the country to the next level? A small boy of 38, when I'm already 38 years in the House of Reps, almost 38 years, somebody who was in the, his mother's womb, I was already in the House of Reps, that will now come to tell me that I have to put his picture on my billboard, tell him that he's short, he's dwarf. He's dwarf to have that quality. We are the men that we can call people of political and democratic value. I have been in the House of Representatives since 1992. Terry, this alone is enough to earn my family a credit. My dad stopped as state assembly member. And in the state assembly, he never even held a chairman of a committee. Today, his son, by the, by, by, by the grace of God, and the providence of good Nigerian people, especially my constituents, the people of Tudungwada, the good people of Tudungwada and Dogua federal constituency, decided to keep on voting for me, voting for me. Today, I have five certificates of elections. Five certificates of elections. If I should add with the rerun that I went back to take, then I have six certificates of elections. And I want to keep a date with you that on the 28th day of February 2023, the seventh certificate of return to bring me back here as member of the House of Representatives, by the grace of God, Allah will make it possible. Speakership of, house, of the House of Reps for the 10th Assembly? Are, are we in the 10th Assembly now? Tell me no. Have I won election, already won election as member of the House of Representatives? Tell me no. But you are qualified. I, have, I may be qualified, but let me put it on record that today, my aspiration as of today is only to win for my election as member of the House of Representatives to represent Dogua Tudungwada Federal Constituency. I may have disposition, for instance, to, may want to, to feel like wanting to be speaker. I may have perhaps the biological desire or the psychological desire to want to be speaker. But I want to tell you and put on record is that I'm not, I am today not working for speakership. I am only working to run for the election and win my election in the Federal Constituency. There is what we call in Hausa as an adage, why rushing to bring the nurse when, the, when, the, when the, the mother has not yet delivered? There is no point rushing to bring the nurse when the, the, the woman is still in labor. So what I want to say precisely is that I have no business wanting or desiring or aspiring to be speaker today because we have not gotten to the bridge. Let me win my election, get to the bridge, Terry, when I get to the bridge, I will cross it. Uh, so, one of my colleagues wants to know if you have talked about Mohamed Bola Jaro. Of course, if he is not called to order, I, have, I will be helpless because myself alone cannot be the alpha and omega of the party. If he is not called to order, they feel we should continue in the same manner we are, we, we are, we are, we are going. They fail to bring everybody on board. If they fail to be inclusive, all inclusive, to bring people who matter to come and work for the party. If they don't ask him to stop arrogance and embarrassing people in public, including abuses, then definitely I want to say to the APC, forget Kano. It is a boat that I have boarded. It's like a flight that I am boarding. The captain too, Ganduje, is on board. Whoever else is also on board. If you allow then, uh, somebody, if you allow an arrogant person in the boat, in the, in the, in the flight, to rock it down, then no problem. Everybody will be consumed. But I will never go out of APC, come what may. I am APC by nature. My blood is APC. My, my sweat is APC. My skin is APC. And my big gown here is Bola Ahmed Tunubu for the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And so be it by that grace.